I believe when you get saved, you do what He wants you to. And if you not, if you get saved and there's not been a change in you, then I say you need to go back again. But I want to say this tonight. When we can get this back over to a lot of people that there's nobody that hadn't sinned. But there's a lot of people sitting that's got a spyglass. You know what I'm saying? And they're looking at somebody's backyard, looking over somebody to see something they've done wrong. And then, as one man told us one time, he said, he said, I'm a perfect man. And the pipe, my pastor stood up and he said, I want to shake your hand. He said, why? Why do you say that for, preacher? He said, I ain't never shook one, I ain't seen Jesus yet. But he said, that'll be the only man that ever walked this earth that was a perfect man. Amen. But we strive to perfection, don't we? Amen. All right, I want you to look at this scripture, and I want to talk about why Jesus came. I want to talk about uh, a lot of things we've heard in life, and, and, but I want us to know that Jesus had a purpose in life. I was looking at that, and uh, a lot of people, they'll, they'll look at you, and they try to categorize sin. And you say, what do you mean, categorize sin? Well, some of them say, that wasn't a sin, I just made a mistake. If it's, <laughs> if it's in the ca same category, it's still sin. Amen. You know what I'm saying. But uh, it's, and, and a lot of people try to say that was a mistake and that don't God will forgive. Well, God don't even look at that, he does. If you sin, you sin. And the best thing for do is get it on out and let it go. But I was looking at that and... Jesus came, and I was looking at this, uh, for, uh, uh, for rest, to be restoration, for our restoration. You say, well, preacher, what are you talking about? Well, I'm going to take my time. He came for restoration and not condemnation. A lot of people all the time when they're preaching, and I preach sometimes quite hard on people, but all they want to do is down folks. But tonight, can I lift you up just a little bit if you'll let me? If you'll follow me, I hope to get you out of here with a, with a great big uh, boost and say, boy, I felt better getting down. But he wanted to come, and he wanted uh, for restoration and not for condemnation. St. John chapter 3, verse 17 says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. That's restoring us back to him. There's, let me say this to you, there's not, nobody has to teach a child how to sin. Amen. All right. A lot of people say, now that if you want to touch God, that little kid back there, curly-headed boy, is she cute? I'm a, she, she, she's got, I've had her in my eye ever since, I'm a, I'm a kid lover. And, uh, but I get to thinking about that, that little kid one of these days is going to realize she's a sinner. Now, let me say this to you. When she was to die tonight, that, hey, she's as perfect as God is right there. If you want to touch God, if you want to see what God feels like, just touch a child. You know what I'm saying? But God said we've all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the Bible said he said he came, uh, God sent not his son into the world condemned, but that the world through him might be, uh, might be saved. Jesus also came to restore Huh? Have you ever seen anybody get down? Ain't this the hardest time in the world you've ever seen to live for the Lord? Come on, be all, be just tell it like it is. Now I know the Bible said a way of a transgressor is hard, but I've never seen the time like it is. It's so hard. Every time you turn around and you try to, you think something's going right. While I, everything turned wrong, I was coming down here, and uh, my wife is on that oxygen thing, and she has to have that to keep her to have oxygen. First thing happened to me, just got that thing and blowed out a hose. And I thought, well, God, I, I'll get that fixed and, and, and we'll, we'll just go right home. Went out and looked at my car and had a flat tire. Yeah, one of my dear brothers on the telephone, I was telling him, I said, boy, I'm telling you what, seems like everything in the world is, is happening to me. He said, maybe the Lord's telling you not to go. I said, Hello. Now, why would God tell me not to come down here and try to help somebody and get them uh, so, some more, uh, well, some joy? Hey, he's full of joy and he's unspeakable. But we've got to get folks to understand, he'll restore you if you'll let him. You say, preacher, I've not been unrestored. Yeah, we all have. We've all done things that we shouldn't do. Amen. Huh? 
Amen. Now, I'm not in choice. This is going to be kind of a little different preaching, but I want you to know something. Now, in other words, uh, to restore it is to, uh, the, to be bringing back to the former condition that you was before things happened. You know what I'm saying? Then it says uh, to reinstate or to give back or to return forgiveness of sin, to return back to the right relationship with Christ. That's what he came for. He came back to pull us back to reinstate us with him. Hey, God does not like it when we're not walking with him. Amen. Uh, but you know what? It's good to smile every now and then, isn't it? I was thinking last night, my wife, and, uh, and, and, and I, I look at things different than some folks. I was watching her when she sleeps. It's been a long time since she's had a good rest, a night's rest. And I was watching her brother. And I, I was looking at her and I thought, God, let her have a good night's rest. Lord, just, and I just laid down. I was afraid to move. I was afraid to wake her up. And all this stuff, you know what I'm saying? She got up this morning. She said, had a good night's rest. I said, thank God. Let me tell you something. God's got rest for you if you let him have rest. You say, preacher, why do I need rest? Hey, Jesus even went aside and had a rest. Do you remember that? He went aside. He pulled aside. Some folks don't want to. Hey, they can go on vacations. They can go out there and get in the water and all that stuff and get almost shark bit. <laughs> hey, I got, but hey, ain't no shark going to bite me. He ain't going to bite me down here in these mountains. I ain't getting out there. Hey, man, a lot of folks say, well, said I ain't afraid of him. I am. I ain't going to lie. Hey, man, but let me tell you something. There's one thing about God that I love. God sent his son Jesus to save us and he sent him that if we make something, something happens to us. If we sin, the Bible says that God will restore us back to him and give us to whatever the state that we was in. How do you get it, preacher? By going to him. Amen. Amen. Hey, you can tell me. Hey, so I, I was out here at uh, uh, First Free Will Baptist here a while back preaching. And uh, old, uh, old Bud Hargis, and we was, they was some uh, young ladies and, and their teens sitting on the front by, uh, second bench. And, and man, I was giving an altar call, and one of them looked up, the other and this and looked up, and this and started crying. I said, you might well come on. Amen. And that lady started toward the altar, and she got up there, and she laid her head over on my shoulder, and she said, man, said, I feel like crying. I said, help yourself. This other girl, she comes up there and she looked at me and she said, Preacher, I just can't hardly hold it from not crying. I said, well, just go ahead. And she said, wow! And she went to shouting, whole church come alive. Let me tell you something. Sometimes if you just raise your finger, somebody else might lift an arm. Huh? But hey, I'm afraid if I do this, they'll call me for a holiness. I am. Amen? Bible said without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. I'm holiness. Amen. Anyway, <laughs> preacher, hey, are you Pentecostal? You got that right. Amen. The Bible said that they had received the Spirit. And then the Bible also said this, without the Spirit, you're none of His. Amen. Amen. There's no way that you can be saved without having the Holy Ghost. You're welcome. Amen. Amen. You say, preacher, does it work for me like it does for them? I hope not all the time. Amen. There's one preacher got up there on a 50 or 60 something million dollar airplane. Y'all see that? Said the Lord didn't walk around on other. and said, uh, you people ought to buy me a, amen. Jesse Duplantis, if you won't know. <laughs> huh? Yeah, but something's happened here lately. He's not on television. <laughs> Don't seem like it must be what. Wonder who cut him off. Are you listening? Give God the glory. Give God the glory. Let me, let me, let me give me back in this. Let me tell you something. Jesus came to restore us. Jesus came to reinstate us. Not only that, in 1 John 2 and 1 through 4, he said, My little children, I write unto you that you sin not. But, watch out. But if you do sin, you have an advocate. What is an advocate? That's somebody to come in and sit in your place and to plead your case and, and to sit in there and, and tell them that tell them about you maybe things that they don't know. If you look in the Word of God, you'll find out that they're the one that supports. They're the one that sits there and defends. They're the one that urges them that they ought to listen to them. And, and let me say this to you. <laughs> Jesus said, I'll stand by you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. 
so you understand why my little children I write unto you. Now let me ask you this question. Who was he talking to? His little children. Now if they're his little children, what are they? Saved? Hello? Talk with me now. I'm going to show you something. People will get you around and keep your head down. A man that never made a mistake has never done nothing. Amen. Are you listening to me? Hey, I, I heard about this fella back here fixing to start preaching. And, uh, boy, I'll pray for you. These people ask me sometimes, said, you think I ought to go to preaching? I said, if you can help it, don't. Don't. Amen. These people, they see these preachers all the time going around and acting like they're having fun. I'm going to tell you something. If you fight the devil and can have some fun, you better man than I am. Huh? You say, well, do you fight with the devil? Well, sure. He's an adversary. He's the one. Hey, who do you think causes you to make mistakes? Who do you think causes you to, who causes you to do the thing that you shouldn't do? Is it you? It's Satan putting it in your head. Our young kids today don't have to do what they're doing. Huh? Now, I'm not again our young kids. I love them. And I like to see them. Hey, Amen. I, I like to, I, I used to go into churches years ago and people would come around me. And, and the kids that come and they'd want to sit, like, you know, sit right next to you. I had a pastor told me one time, he said, Preacher, you show me a preacher that can't get next to a kid, watch him. Now, that's what I was told. And I thought, why? He said, because a kid can tell true love. A kid can tell about it. They can watch it. Listen to what he says. He said, I'll, I'll walk with you. He said, I'll be with you. He said, I'll reinstate you. And he tells them not to sin. And then listen to it. James 4 and 7 says, he said he came to, to take care of the, uh, the, un -neglected, the neglected sin. You say, what are you talking about, preacher? Well, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. The Bible said, therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and do it, that not it is a but yet they won't do nothing about it. They want to you know, just keep going. You can't keep walking in sin and please the Lord. Amen. Is that true? Then listen to what he says. My problem, your problem is that we just won't admit we've done something wrong. Huh? Don't need to throw you wise for your husband to come up sometime and admit they're wrong. Huh? Hey, I'll start an argument sometime just so we can have a fuss. And you know what I'm saying? I mean, honestly, you say, <laughs> you think I'm lying. I, I mean, I, sometimes I'll, do, I'll just say something, just get her arguing, go on the next thing, you know, I say, you're going to go out and eat. You know what I'm saying? And then get her out there, won't you pay for it? You know what I'm saying? Huh? Let me tell you something. God's people have, have quit having fun in church. Huh? There was no reason tonight with the power of God, and I'm going to say this, and you might get mad at me, but I hope you don't. There's no reason that we shouldn't have had a little bit of shouting tonight with under the power that these kids were singing under a while ago. Not a bit of reason in the world. They should have got one hand. Mom, would you hold your hand up? You better hold your hand up. Amen. Let me tell you something. Me as a minister, my wife has to show Christ. Are you listening? Your wife has to show Christ. She has to, she has to walk like, you, you think a preacher has to walk straight? Mama, you fixing to walk straight too. I'm telling you because they're going to come up to you. You know what I'm talking about. They're going to be, how many of you remember about that possum life? thing? <laughs> told my wife, I said, where'd that come from? She said, I don't know, but I say we got a lot of possums in churches. <laughs> Amen. Bless me if you can. You ever see them? Hey, I'm not the blesser. All I can do is preach to you. All I can do is tell you. Hey, you say, well, well, you're awful quiet tonight. There ain't no shouting. That ain't my fault. The word's still true. The word's still shout you. But you got to want to shout. Hey, I go down. <laughs> when I used to work for the city of Maryville, I drove a big old garbage truck. Mama closed your ears. She don't like me to tell that. I was a garbage collector. My job was always picking up. You know what I'm saying? I mean, hey, didn't, people said, well, you mean you picked that old garbage up? I said, it was theirs. It wasn't mine. You know what I'm trying to say? 
It was their garbage. But I'd go down the street and had an old man over there lived in, in, in a big, big black guy. His name was Jumpin' Joe. He played professional. Man, I had to stand and look up at him. But he loved the Lord. And one time I got way down in the spirit and I was going through his neighborhood. And I was going down. I looked up the street and old Joe, he come down with his Bible in his hand. And let me tell you something. I'm trying to tell you, church, this is the reason you need to be happy. How he come down through his Bible in his hand just to sing and then going on here and black folks can sing, boy. And he got right up next to the church, uh, big old truck I was driving and he didn't have to get up on the side to look in. He just looked over in it. When he looked over in it, I know old Joe for a long time. I was sitting there so burdened down and he looked at me and you know what he done? He just walked up to me and he looked over me and he just backed up about three steps right in front of all them big folks' homes and hollered, Oh, God! I got a brother that's in trouble, oh God. And he started praying in the middle of that street. I'm telling you what the power of God got on me. And we used to have to park a truck for a little while and have people coming to the windows and looking out. Amen. I'm telling you, you ought to get your neighborhood knowing you love God. Amen. Huh? Hey. But I, I thought about that. But let me hurry on. Let me hurry on. Y'all, now I ain't been up here 30 minutes. Hey, man, you ought, to say, you ought to been with me years ago. But listen to what it said. First John 1 and verse number 9 said this. If we confess our sins or admit them, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In other words, he'll restore our fellowship with Christ if we just admit our sins. Amen. Hey, man, it's not hard. Everybody tell you, boy, you messed up now, just might well give up. You know what I'm saying? But I'm glad if we'll just admit that we've had problems. Then verse 10 said this. If we say that we have no sin, we make him a liar and the word is not in us. You see, there's not a one of you sitting here that hadn't done something wrong. Now I'm not saying, let me say this. The Bible talks about a man that'll walk in sin, follow sin and do sin, don't know, know God. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You don't try to go around sinning. But let me say this, and I'm about through. Hang in there. You've done well. Amen. Then look what it says. Then Romans 6, 23, he says this. For the wages of sin is death. Wait a minute. But, I'm glad that's in there. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. In other words, you might have sinned, but you can still get back to God. That's what he's saying to us. A lot of folks don't understand. Listen to what it says. I, I'm going to read this tonight. In Romans chapter 10, verse number 13. Or, yeah, Romans 10 and verse 13. Devil, you ain't going to beat me out of that. Listen to what it says. And I like this. As it is written, that's not where it's at. But I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna let the devil beat me. The Bible says this, I can just quote it to you. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. What does it say? Come on. Shall be saved. Now, I just had that fixed right before I come up here. And, and, and I know something's going to blow up because, see, I'm telling on devil. Boy, I like it. I'll have fun after a while. You know what I'm saying? But let me say this to you. You might be sitting here, and there's some fellas in here tonight. And I love young folks, and I, I really do. But the only help you're going to have is through the Lord Jesus Christ. There's going to be time that mom and daddy ain't going to be there. And you're going to have to go on what they've taught you. And you're going to have to stand up for it. And I say, God ever taught them, have I done the best I could? Listen, he came to restore us back to him. He came to forgive us. He came to lead us. He came to guide us. He came to give us joy. His joy is unspeakable and full of glory. And wouldn't you rather smile than to frown? Huh? Did you know it takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile? Huh? Amen. I'm, I'm, I ain't going to get in that now. I'm going to let that alone. There's one thing I learned a long time ago. You don't tell mama how to dress. Hello? 
And that you women ought to said amen right there. None of you said a word. I give you a chance to get you a good amen in there. Amen. Let me say this to you. If you love you, if you love the Lord, if you love Him for all He's done, hey, He came that you might have life. If you sin, hear me good. Don't go out and try to sin. If you know it's wrong, leave it alone. Amen. Huh? Don't go over here and say, now, listen, Tommy, uh, would, would it be all right if I'd done this? Do you think the Lord let me do it? I mean, and all you're doing is that you know it's wrong or you wouldn't have asked him. And all you want him to do is, is to say, well, I'm going to say it's all right for you to go on and sin, but don't you shouldn't do that. If it comes to your mind that you shouldn't do it, what should you do? Leave it alone. Walk away from it. Don't, don't play around it. Because the devil's got a trick if you stay there. Amen. Mama, I wanted to say this to you tonight. Jesus came to forgive us of our sins. To let us, I'm glad. Hey, you say are you free from sin as much as I know. I'm free from sin. But let me tell you this. There's nothing that, that says that tomorrow something might happen that God laid on my heart that I didn't do. And that would become sin if I didn't do it. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. Everybody thinks to commit sin you've got to shoot somebody or you've got to do this or that. That's not the only sins they are in the world. Huh? They're sins of, of not committing your life to the Lord. Amen.